Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 19 of the platform specific series for my 68000 assembly tutorials. This time we're going to be looking at the Neo Geo, and we're going to be using the FM capabilities of the sound chip. Now, a long time ago in the Z80 series, we actually covered how to use the AY part. So if you're just looking for simple sounds, that would be the way to go. But if you're actually looking to do things that are a bit more advanced, then this is going to be more interesting to you because we're going to look at the basics of making some simple FM sounds and you could build on that to make something more musical. OK, so let's start from the beginning. I'm going to assume you don't know anything about Neo Geo sound. We have to do everything from the Z80 processor and then we have to get the 68000 processor to talk to the Z80. So the code we're going to be writing today is actually going to be mostly Z80 code. And part of the code is actually going to be the same as when we looked at it in the Z80 series. That's the code that handles the communication between the two processors. But that said, of course, we're going to have lots of new code for the YM2610. Now, you can see in the title here, possibly, that I've got a mentioning of the Sega Genesis as well. Now, this is because the Genesis FM sound chip is actually a similar processor. It's actually more advanced. The Neo Geo one can only do four channels. The Sega Genesis one can do six. However, the Neo Geo one can also do digital sound quite capably, whereas I believe the Genesis is more limited there. So it's a bit of a swings and roundabouts thing. But the code we're going to look at today, the Z80 code can actually be mostly executed on the Genesis. So we're going to see the code again later in the future. And if you are looking at the Genesis, the theory of how the sound channels work on the FM sound chip is identical. It's just you've got more channels on the Genesis. So let's have a look at that. Now, the YM2610 that the Neo Geo uses has two pairs of ports. Now, you see there are two sets of channels. On the Neo Geo, we have channel one and two, and then channel three and four. But on the Genesis, we would have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. And we have a two pairs of ports for each of these. So if we wanted to use the multiplier and detune, for example, and we wanted to set channel one, we would want to select the register. And the way we do this is we write hexadecimal 31 to port four, and then we would write the new value for that to port five. So that's how we would set channel one, operator one, multiply detune. Now, if we wanted to do channel three, we would also use hexadecimal 31, but we would write this to port six and then write the new value to port seven. So just depending on whether we use port four and five or port six and seven, we'll select whether we're writing to channel one or channel three, if we're writing to hexadecimal 31, or channel two and channel four, if we're writing he to hexadecimal 32. So these pairs of ports allow the same register address numbers to double up and use twice as many channels. Now on the Neo Geo, you can see we've got channel one and two, channel one and two here, and these use numbers 31, 32, 35, and 36 here. On the Genesis sound chip, these address numbers do the exact same thing. However, there were more of them. There is an extra channel at hexadecimal 30 that we don't have. So that's how the Genesis has three channels per port. I am totaling up to six, whereas the Neo Geo has only two totaling up to four. So we're going to be using channel one on the Neo Geo. But when we see this code again later on the Genesis, we'll effectively be using channel two because of that extra channel. OK, so that's just a little bit of the theory there. Now, you can see there's an entire range of registers we can change. We're going to look at the basics of these when we come to making our sound within Chibi Sound. But I think first, let's actually hear things happening. So you can see this number's going down and our tone is changing. Now I write this Chibi Sound Driver on all of my systems. It uses a single byte, so you can see only the bottom two nibbles are actually doing anything. The top bit is tone, either noise or normal tone, one being noise. Then there's a volume bit, one being loud, one being quiet, and the remaining six bits are the pitch. Now we're using the LFO effect, which is kind of distorting it a little bit. It's not as good a distortion on some systems, but this is the best I've managed to work out so far. So this is what we're going to be doing today, and we're going to learn how this works. So we're going to start by covering the Z80 code that actually makes the sound and uses the registers. Then we'll look at the Z80 code, which is handling the communication from this 68000 to the Z80. And finally, we're going to look at the 68000 side, which is talking to that Z80. Now, the Z8, th those two parts are actually the same as what we covered before in the Z80 series. But the code that actually uses the FM sound chip is, of course, completely new. Now, when it comes to compiling, we're going to have to do a two-part compilation. We've got this sound driver here, 
which I will admit I didn't write myself. It was taken almost verbatim from this website here. It's a beginner's driver and I've just added some extra code to it to work with Chibi Sound. So um, thanks to these guys or this person who made this because very helpful. It was really not worth my time trying to make something that did the same thing because they've done it perfectly. Now, when we want to compile this, I've got a script called Z80neo here. What it does is it uses VASM Z80 compilation and compiles this to a binary file at the correct location. Now, when it comes to compiling the sound, we actually have to create a file within the audio CPU. So we have to compile to 202m1-1 here, and that will be the file that is essentially the binary code that is loaded into the ROM and makes our sound. So if I just compile this again here using the Z80 option, it will actually start our emulator again automatically now with that new cartridge. And of course, it's doing the same thing there. So. Um, now, just as an example, if I put in a halt here and compile again, we've now got no sound and our program's actually crashed. And this is because I've effectively broken the sound driver. So I just wanted to show you there that the Z80 code is compiling and is part of the final ROM. Okay, so let's look at the Chibi sound driver itself then. Now, I've, it works the same every time. We've got six bits that define the pitch, one that defines the volume, and one that defines the noise. Now, when it comes to controlling the processor on the Neo Geo, as I said before, we have to write to two ports. First, we have to write to port 04. This selects the register that we want to change. Now, we're going to be always using channel one because we just need a single sound. We would be using six and seven as well if we were using multiple, but we're not. So, so we write the register we want to change to port four. Then we write the new value, which will be in C to port five. But we do have to wait between each write. We have to check that the sound chip is actually ready to receive data. The way we do this is we read in a byte from port four. We check bit seven and we see if that's zero or not. Now, if it's not zero, then the processor is busy doing something else. And so we loop here until it is, and then we return. So we can use this FM reg write to write to register A, the value C, and we're gonna see this an awful lot in our code. So this is how we're gonna be setting our sound up. Now, the first thing we do when Chibi Sound starts is we need to check if we're gonna stop the sound. There's a special state when if we're given a byte zero, we're gonna stop the sound. So the, what we do to do that is we jump up to here, and the First thing we do is we lift up the keys. Now, each channel is built up of operators that make up the sound. If we stop all of the operators, that will stop the sound, but also we're going to disconnect the channel from the speakers. Now, if we connect our channel to the left speaker, it would come out the left side. If we connect it to left and right, it would make a sound from both speakers. But if we disconnect both, then effectively we have no sound at all. And that's what we're doing here. So we're using register 28 which is the key on, you can see that just here, and this is effectively stopping the sound. But then we're also setting the left and right to be disconnected, and we're doing that using B5 here, and this will disconnect the sound from both speakers. Now, if we're not going to stop the sound, we're actually going to make a tone here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to flip all of the tone bits. And the reason for this is we need the tone to get higher as the number gets lower. And that's the opposite of the way the FM sound chip will work. So we're just flipping the bits to make sure things work consistently. Now what we're doing is we're backing the accumulator up into the H register because we're going to need to do various operations on that byte where we're passed and work out how things are going to work. So we're using H as a backup. First, we're going to do the volume. So the volume bit is just here, and you can see we're ending it here to get it. Now, again, on the FM sound chip, the zero volume is actually the loudest, and 127 is effectively silent. So what we need to do is we need to flip that around. So we're just doing an XOR here to invert it. So the one is the loudest when we passed it, but we need to make the zero the loudest for our code. And then we, write, and then we rotate it twice to the right. This puts it in the right position for a nice loud and quiet setting. And then we store that in C. We store 4D in the accumulator. And that's the total level just here for operator for channel one. And that's going to be what we're going to be using in all of the cases here. Then we just run the red write. That sets the volume for that channel. OK. So now we need to work on the pitch. Now we've got six bits of pitch passed to us, you can see just here. So we're going to split those up. We're going to split two of the bits up and we're going to rotate them to the right four times or in a couple of bits here and store this to A5. 
Now this sets the octave for channel one. You can see we're effectively setting these bits here with the two that were passed to us. And then we're setting these three bits to one just to select the right position within the range that the FM chip's capable of for our sound. So that's set the high part of the octave, but we're also setting the low part just here using register A1, which you can see just here. Now, these options, of course, actually apply to the entire sound channel. You can see that there's only one per, per channel, but some of these have operation four, operation three, operation two, operation one. So some of them are split out for four, the four operations that build up the sound, and some of them are just at the channel level. As I say, we're doing a very simple sound. We're only using operation four in all cases, but if you wanted a more complex sound, like a string sound, you, you, you might need to merge other ones together. That's gonna be outside of the scope of these tutorials though. Okay, so we've set our pitch now with the combination of these two, and we've set our volume. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check if we want to make a noise or not. So we check bit seven. If bit seven zero, we're not making a noise. If it isn't zero, we are going to make a noise. So what we do is we turn on the LFO. This oscillates the frequency. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set this bit here to one to turn it on. And then we need to select a frequency. And I've decided to use 110 as the setting because that works best in my experience. So we're using port 22 here, address 22, sorry. And this is enabling the LFO. But there were other things we have to do to make that LFO work, okay. Now we looked at B5 before when we were muting the volume. Now we also need to use this at this point because if we're not muted, firstly, we need to connect the left and right speakers, but also this register works with setting how the LFO affects the channels. So we're setting an amplitude and a frequency mod here. You can see these are the frequency mod settings and these are the amplitude settings just here. And depending on the settings you use, you get different kind of sounds. So again, I failed this with the most kind of course distorted one I could figure out. Now I think you could probably do a lot better with a more advanced algorithm but I'm not that familiar with these FM sound chips and so I just wanted to get something relatively simple for this tutorial working. Okay so at this point we've done most of the work we need to do to get that LFO working. There's another little bit we'll see later though. So we then skip over the next bit because this bit is relating to no noise. We effectively do the same. We write to register 22, writing a zero, effectively turning off the LFO, but we still need to connect the sound to make it play. So again, we set these top two bits to get the left and right channel connected and write that to register B5. Now at this point, we've done all of the settings relating to our noise, our volume and our pitch. So what we're doing now is we're setting some defaults. We need to select an algorithm. Now on FM sound chips, the algorithm you select de defines how the different operators combine to make up the sound. Now, in our case, we're only using operator four, which is basically usually the last one. And so it really doesn't matter which algorithm we select, but if we were using a more complex sound with multiple operators building together, then the way each one would feed into the next to generate the final sound would be quite different and quite important. But in our case, it's really not too important. We, we do need to, of course, select some things. So we're selecting algorithm zero here, and then we're writing that to be one. Now B1 will select the algorithm for channel one here. Now we're setting the multiplier here and we're basically setting the detune to zero. We need to set something here just to make a, a valid tone. We're then selecting the attack rate and the rate scaling. Now the attack rate, this is relating to the sound over time. Now effectively, if you look at this, this kind of graph here, the attack rate is how fast the sound starts. The decay is how fast it quickly descends. Then there's the sustain, which is the long-term re reduction in sound. And then when the key is released, there's a release period, which is how fast the sound depletes after the key was lifted up. Now, in the case of our example, we want a sound that starts immediately, happens as a, a, consistently and then disappears immediately. So we've got a very simple sound, but if you were looking to create something more like a piano key, that when you strike it, there's a kind of immediate resonance and then a fall off, then you would need to do something more complicated. So we're se selecting the attack rate as being the maximum to make it the, the sound start as fast as possible. The decay rate we're setting to zero here because we don't want any decay. And the sustain, again, we're setting to maximum and the release we're setting to maximum. And this should hopefully make the sound come in really fast and 
would fall off really fast, but we're actually muting the channel when we stop it anyway. So that's the settings we're using for our sound here. Now you can see we've got various registers we're writing to. The, these are all the register settings for operation four of channel one in all cases. So again, if you were using multiple operators, you would need to add more here. But for our simple example, we just need this one. Now the final thing we want to do is we need to select channel one and turn, we need to select channel one and turn on operator four here to make the sound actually play. And that will start the actual tone. If we took that line out, we'd be stuck with no sound at all. So there we go. That's how we actually get the FM sound chip to play sound. But we've only covered the, um, the basics of making the sound. We still need to actually get the 68,000 to talk to the Z80. So how do we do that? Well, first let's have a look at Chibi sound itself, this test routine. Now we're loading D0 with hexadecimal 80 here. We're showing it to the screen, that's all this code does. There's a bit of a pause here. This is the command that calls Chibi Sound, and Chibi Sound on the 68000 side is this little thing here. Now D0 is past the parameter, that byte, with the pitch and the volume and the noise or tone bit. And what we do here is we need to send this to the Neo Geo. Now on the Neo Geo we have just a single port that can talk to the 68000. On the 68,000 side, we can write to hexadecimal 32 quadruple zero, and the byte we write there will be read on the Z80 side from port double zero. Now on the Z80 side, if we write back to port C, the 68,000 can read that from the same address 32 quadruple zero. So we're using this single byte port on the 68,000 side and the Z80 side to communicate between the two systems. Now there's a problem. The, a single byte port would be great because we only use a single byte for our setting. However, there are some commands that are reserved by the Neo Geo firmware that it will use for its own purposes. So you can see here these settings here, effectively from zero to 32 are reserved for like the um, boot sound and things like that. You might have noticed when I started my Neo Geo up, you didn't get the Neo Geo sound. That's because my ROM doesn't have any program code to support that. So um, yeah, we, we need to work around that. So because we can't use all of the bits because of that first 32 are in use, what I'm doing is I'm splitting the Chibi Sound Byte into two nibbles and I'm sending it in two parts. So effectively we have two commands. There's the nibble we want to send here and then we send the top two bits as one zero when we're sending the first nibble and then one one when we're sending the second nibble. So because the firmware only uses the first zero to 31 commands. Anything with the top bit set will be 128 or above. So I'm well out of that range. Uh, and that means I can send my byte without too much trouble. And it's a bit of trouble, but not too much. So what we're doing here is we're selecting the bottom nibble. We're then setting the top two bits to one zero. We're sending it to the port that will effectively pass this to the Z80. And then we're waiting for a command 255 back. And this is basically the Z80 saying, yeah, I got that nibble, now send me the next one. And this is why when I killed the Z80 code, the 68000 code stopped because it got stuck in this wait because the Z80 wasn't talking back to it and the code hasn't been programmed to cope with that. Now, once we've sent that first nibble, what we're doing is we're sending, selecting the second nibble, rotating it to the right so it's still in the bottom position here. Then we're setting the top two bits to 1-1 one, one, and we're sending that as well. So that's how we send our data to the Z80 via this port 32,000, reading from 32,000 for when we get a 255. Now the remaining part is of course this code here, which as I said, wasn't written by me. It was written by this very nice development example, which I totally encourage you to look at. Really great site for uh, 68,000 assembly on the Neo Geo, and there's some great um, sample code there. Just looking at it now. So effectively the code is relatively simple here. We've got a starting point here, a jump to the main code. We've got handlers for the interrupts here. Um, whenever we send data to the Neo Geo, it effectively bounces to the NMI routine here. And so what this does is it reads in from port zero and then it works out what kind of command it's got. So you can see here command one is this slot switch and a reset. And so we've got some code here to handle the basics of the commands that might be passed. But whenever we pass with that top bit of one, it's a chibi sound command. So if that top bit isn't one, we're skipping this routine and then we're just clearing the data out of the port so that the Z80 can start looking at the next command. So basically the code here 
is what I've added to this ru this routine. I say I can't take any credit for the rest of it because it's not mine. So what we're doing is we're backing up the data that was passed to us in B here, and then we are effectively taking the top two bits of the accumulator, and we're seeing if it's a first command with one zero here, which we're jumping to chibi first. If it's one one, which is everything else basically, then it's the second nibble. And so when we get the first nibble, we're just filtering that out, loading it back in from B, storing it in this temporary address here. When we get the second one, we're shifting the bits to the right, effectively moving them to the top again, oring in that original part. And then once we've got the second part added to the first part, we've got a full byte, so we're calling chibi sound. Now, when we've done our command, we need to send that byte back to the 68000 so that it knows we've done the job. So when we've processed that first part, we need to do this chibi sound done routine here, and this will send a 255 byte back to the 68000, and this will tell the 68000 to send the second part. So that's the basics of my driver that's talking to the 68000 side and handling the problem of basically that we can't send a full byte in one go. So there we go. So that's how we can use the 68000 and the Z80 together to get that FM sound working. Now we're going to see some of this code again on the Genesis series because while this Neo Geo code won't work on the Genesis, this sound routine here will work as is with no changes because all of these ports exist on the Genesis. It's just the Genesis has a few more that we could use. So we, we can use this code on both systems. So that's all I wanted to cover today. Now we've only done some really very crude sounds on the Neo Geo today, but I, I wanted to show you this as a way of giving you some starting point if you want to create some proper music or something more advanced, because we've created some test code that will work on the Z80. To, we've found a way of talking to the Z80 and sending full bytes, and of course you could extend it to do far more than just a byte. You could add a few extra bits in there and a few more complex sequences to send you know, streams of bytes and things. But from this, you could maybe create a better sound routine or a music player. As I said before, the uh, Neo Geo is capable of emulating the AY sound chip. It's got backwards compatibility. So you could run something like Arcus Tracker on the Z80 and play you a really quite impressive music using that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. We're going to be coming back to the Neo Geo later with sprites and things like that. So please like and subscribe if you want to see more. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye. Now, if you enjoyed today's episode, please check out my website. I've got tutorials on the Z80, 6502 and 68000. All the lessons have video and text content. You can always download the source code as well. In the future, I'm going to be covering ARM and x68 as well. So I've got a lot of content already, a lot more coming. There's lessons relating to individual systems, generic lessons, everything you should be interested in really if you're looking at assembly programming. Now, as well, if you really want to get into the programming, please sign up to my forums. I've got a forum you can sign up to. You can show off your programming work. You can make comments and suggestions on the tutorials. Maybe you've got a better way of doing things. We certainly want to know about that. If you've got questions, please post them and I'll do my best to answer them. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.